He's the GM of the Jets. Mike, it's Mike, Don, and Peter. How you doing? I'm doing good. How you doing, guys? We're doing great. So let me start off with the question that's out there, rumor that was started in The Athletic, that you and Gase are butting heads and that your job is in jeopardy. Your answer to that? Uh, I would, yeah, I would say, and, and again, I'm not going to sit here and comment on my job status or situation, but um, I have a very good, you know, working relationship with Adam. We get along really well. Uh, we worked, I thought we worked very well together through this process. And, uh, but no, I think uh, those are just things, you know, I think everybody always wants to look at situations and stuff like that. But like I said, we have a good situation here and very excited about what we're doing and we're uh, working together going forward. Now, obviously, it's dumb of me to ask you about your job status. I'd have to have Chris Johnson on, so that, that's a good point by you, but do you wonder where this comes from? I mean, when there's smoke like this, where somebody would write it for an established site like The Athletic, is there something to it that you have disagreed on something, that, it, that the media is turning into something bigger than it is? You know, I, I don't think, like I said, it, again, I don't feel that way internally. Like I said, we've worked very well together, but it's, again, it's not something, um, you know, quite frankly, I'm really focused on. I think there's so many things within the building in terms of doing the job that, um, you know, when stuff comes out in the media, again, it's not something we really try to focus on. I'm more concerned with working together with Adam in the building and everything, like I said, has gone very well. I've quite enjoyed working with Adam and I've said this on a few different occasions, like one of the things, like he has a really good sense of humor and we kind of, you know, obviously really brings a lot of uh, levity to a lot of the stressful environments we're kind of working through these processes, but uh, but again, I don't, again, I'm more focused on the job, the job at hand and again, I can't really go worrying about tracking down stuff from the media. All right, it seems like you had a home run with Williams at three. But how close did you come from trading that pick away? You know, I think it was uh, it was a lot of things. There were a lot of calls before the draft, like leading up to it. And uh, but, it, but when, when push came to shove, they're really again we had a few teams kind of inquire, but not to the point of uh, you know putting stuff on the table that made us feel we would want to move out of that pick. We felt very good about Quinn, and, um, but that's what happens sometimes. Sometimes you get a lot of interest, or at least a lot of phone calls and conversations before the draft, um, and it really depends on you know what other teams are looking for, if there's certain players are looking to target, but when all things, when they all kind of unfolded, um, you know, there really wasn't anything there from an offer standpoint. We felt good enough to move on, and we're very happy to take Quinn in and, and very excited to see what he can do with us. Now, everything I've heard about this guy, Mike, it's like, it, it looked not just a home run but a grand slam where people can't find a negative about this kid that this kid many people have projected as the best player in the draft do you feel like that about him no yeah we feel very good about him i think when we put our board together he was literally at the top of our board and um you know he's a very young player i know a lot of people have said he only you know had one more or less really productive year of college football but when you really went back and looked at uh, what he put on tape this year against the competition he played against um, week in and week out, there really weren't any games in there where you felt, you know, that, that was kind of an off game or a bad game. So, um, and again, only just literally turning 21, uh, a very young kid who we think has a very, very bright future. And he's just, in, again, I, we kind of feel he's just beginning to scratch. Uh, the surface is potential and gives us another very big athletic player mm -hmm. that uh, you know not only is a good player versus the run, but also the ability to you know push the you know push the pocket from the middle and generate pressure, which is again a very good thing to have and will definitely help us going forward. All right, polite was your next pick, and there's been rumors of immaturity, character issues. How much did that factor into uh, selecting him? Was it a tough selection because of those things? No, I think, you know, and, um, we do a lot of things. We'd go back and, and really research these players. Um, I think there's risk with every player, more or less, when you go into the draft process. Um, and I think with uh, Jakai, you know, he did not have a, you know, again, a great spring as some other guys have had. We thought very highly of him. You know, we kind of evaluated him on tape. We spent a lot of time evaluating the player, obviously, from a, you know, from an intangible character standpoint, both at Florida and we had the ability to interview him at the Combine and actually bring him in here to, you know, spend a day with him here in New York. Um, but like a lot of things, you know, there's definitely, you know, you know, I think it's it's really up to him what he wants to, you know, how he wants to come along. I think we felt very good about not only his ability and potential, but in the end we thought there was, you know, definitely a great environment for him here where we think, uh, you know, he will hopefully come in and help, you know, fulfill his potential. And we're excited about working with him. And I think if, uh, you know, he does fulfill that potential, he'll give us a very athletic edge rusher um, who was very productive in a, and 
probably the most competitive conferences in college football. So uh, we're excited about having them and excited about working with them going forward. Uh, let, let's drop down to your six pick. Uh, a guy that I respect texted me, said, the Jets got themselves an absolute steal in Austin from Rutgers. Yeah, he's had some injuries, but this kid can be great. What are your thoughts on Austin? Yeah, that was, you know, that was our last pick in the draft, and um, when we're sitting there, you know, we're trying to, again, yeah, it was an interesting, this week, this year was kind of interesting in terms of trades. We were, you know, I think at different times either, you know, looking to, I think with the first pick, we were entertaining potential offers to, to move back early. Um, we tried to move around the draft a little bit. I think there was some, you know, there were a lot of teams that opted to take players and not trade picks, um, but that was one when we were sitting there kind of late in the draft. Um, you know, our scouts and coaches, we've had some exposure to them from our scouts over the last few years. Um, our coaches evaluated them. They liked them quite a bit. Um, we obviously knew there was a bit of a risk with the injury. Our doctors got involved with sort of the prognosis part in terms of, you know, how, how he looks at this stage of his recovery. He did actually run and try a test in time, but he's obviously not near 100% ready um, from, from that standpoint. But he's a kid that, you know, we thought from an upside and potential standpoint, he had a chance to, you know, be a player that could, you know, definitely play and contribute. We'll see what his ceiling looks like. I think prior to the injuries, I mean, there was some, you think if he still, you know, managed to, you know, progress, he'd have an outside chance of maybe even develop into a starting caliber player of some sort. But, um, you know, a very big athletic corner. There's obviously some risk with the injury, but, uh, you know, we liked him from a character standpoint. We liked him, you know, where he is in terms of his rehab you know, rehabilitation process. And, um, you know, again, if, if he can come through for us, then uh, gives us, a, you know, a shot at having a very athletic big corner that can hopefully come in and contribute. So. Mike, only two offensive players, an offensive lineman and a tight end, uh, no wide receivers is that because you felt like you adequately addressed that in free agency or there just wasn't anyone when you came to pick that you thought had value at that position yeah, you know, it's, it's it, not having, you know, I think not having as you know, a lot of picks sometimes when you get into the draft, you're, you're trying to obviously focus, you know, trying to make sure you take the best player available. And there were some situations where we were able to add, obviously, an edge rusher in the third round along with an offensive tackle who we, who we liked. Um, and receiver, you know, I think we feel good about our receiver position, especially what we did in free agency and then getting, obviously, Robbie and Q back. Um, and we do have, you know, Burnett did a nice job for us last year and obviously Peak's a good special teams player for us. But I think going into the draft, um, it was a position, you know, we would like to have added to. Um, but really when the picks kind of came up and there were a few scenarios we were trying to work around and try to, you know, move up or move around to target certain players, it just didn't quite work out that way. But, um, you know, I think the players we got at the, you know, when we took them were kind of guys we felt good about um, as prospects. And um, it, sometimes it's just how the draft works out. There's, you know, you may like receivers at various points, but yeah, maybe you have other players you just feel more strongly about. And I've said this before, sometimes when you reach for players or try to fill, you know, reach for needs or factor in needs, sometimes you always run the risk of, um, you know, maybe, uh, you know, causing a player, you know, maybe not to you can pass on a better player that turns out to, to have a, you know, have a better chance of fulfilling his potential when you, when you start trying to reach for needs and, and only having the picks we had. And we tried to actually get more picks at various times and move around and move back. But, um, you know, we kind of, in the end, felt we got some good prospects and, and sometimes guys that were maybe not maybe yet, but people received to be a need for us, but guys that we felt were good players for, you know, hopefully come in and contribute and build with going forward. In, in a perfect world, would you have liked to take a center? You know, I think that was a position we, we – and there were some good centers in this draft, and I think some of them kind of, you know, more or less went earlier in the draft. Um, but there was a, there was, that was a position we looked at. Um, but, again, sometimes they just weren't, you know, the best prospects on the board weren't centers when we were sitting there trying to make picks. There were definitely times we tried to move around or move up. But, um, again, unfortunately, sometimes it's, you always have to take two. You have to find a team that wants to actually move the pick and as opposed to take a player. So, But it worked out that way. But mm -hmm. we still – and I always tell people, it's, we're, you know, we're not – Obviously, playing our first game next week or playing our first game months from now, we still have quite a bit of off-season left. There's still some guys in pro free agency that are out there. Um, you know, there's obviously, you know, potential trades as you go forward. And, and quite frankly, when we get to the final waiver wire cut, there's if, if you go, everybody goes back and look at some of the roster transactions at the final cut down, there's, you know, veteran and rookie players that either get terminated or waived that, um, you know, that, you know, turn out to be good players. And uh, we're going to obviously look at all, you know, all areas and make our roster as competitive mm -hmm. as possible for that first, first regular season game. Mike, I know he didn't violate any rules because it was voluntary, but did it bother you at all that Bell was a no-show at the voluntary minicamp? 
You know, I think the, the the one thing we always see, you know, this is our CBA, and this is, you know, players have the ability to come in. You know, Le'Veon did come in for a bit, and uh, but again, you know, it's it's one of those things. You know, again, it's voluntary. So, like with all the players, you know, we, you know, they, it's their decision to be here or not. But um, but he's, you know, he's he's a pro, and he's taking care of his body, and been played at a very high level. So we obviously feel good about that. Um, but again, from our standpoint, you know, it's a voluntary process, and the player, you know, it's it's really up to the player. Before we let you go, I'm always curious. So you have Sam Darnold. He's your quarterback of the future. So when you're preparing for this draft, Mike, do you ignore the quarterbacks, or do you, do you study uh, tape of them, and do you, do you talk to them, or do you just say, hey, we're set there? Well, you know, it's interesting, Mike. I, I think for the last few years, we've obviously spent quite a bit of time on the quarterbacks, and quite frankly, with when we drafted Sam, I had literally was on the West Coast because obviously, you know, Josh and Sam both played, Josh Rosen and Sam Darnold both played in the same city. So when they both played home, it was very convenient to go out there and, and they'd always stagger their games. You can more or less evaluate two quarterbacks at the same time or the same day. Um, but it's funny. I spent so much time working on the quarterbacks and, you know, more or less a year ago for obviously the draft when we got Sam. Um, that this year was kind of, I think, really just feeling so good about Sam and, and how he he played and his potential, and we feel like we have a very good young quarterback in Sam Darnold, and our focus now is obviously you know, help him fulfill that potential. But it was interesting this year. I, I spent, I really didn't look at a lot of the high-rated quarterbacks that closely. I mean, I think you, um, you know, I think somebody asked me once at the Senior Bowl, you know, how one of the quarterbacks was doing, and I was kind of like, honestly, like past years, I could probably have a complete opinion on his whole day so far from warm-ups to every drill he threw, but I'd only really watched the guy throw about two times. So we, we went through the process with the quarterbacks, but we didn't spend, quite frankly, as much time, um, myself personally, on the high-rated quarterbacks. We more focused on sort of the back-end guys that, you know, maybe if they slid in the draft, we'd have a feel for them. And, um, but most of those guys we felt were going to be fairly early round considerations we didn't really spend as much time on. Um, but that was actually a nice, a, a kind of a nice feeling to have, you know, because of how we felt about Sam, that you go into the draft feeling, okay, that's an area where we, right. you know, we don't really necessarily they have to focus as much of our attention on and um, we felt very good getting Trevor Simeon I think he's going to come in and do a good job for us and then obviously Davis from a year ago um, you know did some nice things in our practice roster so we thought we have a good group there to work with and and we're kind of excited to go forward with that hey, b hey by the way too and and I was I was somebody had mentioned to me about uh did Peter is Peter getting a little heat today about the Game of Thrones? Yes. Thing? I have I have, let me pause. Let me pause. I have not seen the Game of Thrones show from last night, so I don't know anything that happened yet. So yeah, he's giving spoilers. No, no, I, and I'm not going to say anything, Mike, to you. You didn't, and I didn't give anything away. Just so you know, though, your own organization gave away more on your social media account than I've given away on this show. Well, let me just say this: I was I, I, not that I look on my our social media account, but somebody said something about one of the characters from Game of Thrones, and I was literally like, I have no idea. That what that means, but do not tell me because I have not right. seen the show last night. So, so. so you realize that it's on you. It's not on the rest of the world to keep quiet about it, that if you watch the show and you missed it, then you know on Monday you've got to do it. You've got to be mindful. Of, of oh be mindful God, and I, not pay every attention. Every time I've gone on the internet, I've been very careful not to like click on anything. It's like, it's funny. Like, I just don't want to uh, spoil <laughs> the... Because I, actually, I, I, truth be told, I, somebody, a friend of mine took me to the Avengers movie the other day, and I'm not going to talk about what happened with that, but somebody was at I was after the movie. I was with somebody, and they were like, "Oh, we're gonna go see it tomorrow." And I was like, "Oh yeah." I said, "It's you know," and I started to talk about the plot, and they're like, "No, don't tell me." And I was like, "You know, all right, sorry about that." Yeah. <laughs> People get very, very. Yeah, I'm getting, I, I'm getting screamed at. The, the one thing that happens that I'll tell you, Mike, is in the middle of the episode, Jon Snow drinks. Don't, an don't. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to hear. I do not want to hear. I do not want to hear, guys. He drinks so. an orange vanilla Coke right in the middle of the episode. <laughs> All right, I'm glad. You don't listen to Peter anymore, Mike. Don't, don't no, do it. No, no. I, I, I was gonna, I was gonna have a disclosure just to make sure nobody inadvertently said something about Game of Thrones. No, no, you're safe. Right, I got, I've got to ask you one final thing. I mean, I, I almost find it humorous that the media, us included, we waste your time, and you kind of all waste our time. Do you ever tell the truth before the draft? Do do GMs oh. ever tell the truth to each other? You know what's funny? I think it was, I may have my, uh, I'm friends with Eric DeCosta. I think it may have been Eric was, said some little thing about, you know. I, I, no, I think, uh, I think what happens with this, Mike, is that, um, 
there, there's so much misinformation that comes out. Like, and I, and I'll, I don't know if you guys, and this again, maybe the fans want to hear this, but a year ago, when we're sitting there, you know, getting ready for the draft, and, and we'd moved up to three, and we felt very comfortable when we made that move. Hey, we felt very comfortable. We'd have a very good opportunity to get the second quarterback drafted, based on all of the stuff we'd gathered, information, resource, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and we, we were pretty well positioned. And um, a lot of people ask me, like, did you guys, you know, expect Cleveland to draft, you know, Baker? And I said. I said no. I said uh, honestly, not until the day of the draft. And I think, and and I and I know John Dorsey very well, and consider him a friend. He's a really, really, really talented GM. And it's funny, like when you were following the media stuff and all that stuff. And every week it was like, I don't know if you guys remember this, but every week it was a like different. You know, Cleveland really liked you know Josh Allen. Cleveland really liked you know Josh Rosen. Right. They went know, out with Sam Darnold's it, parents. It was, a, it was a different name every week. And right. at, the, at the pro day, I was at the pro day, and, and I know they spent a lot of time with Sam. And I don't think we even really at the Pro Day met with Sam um, that day, but uh, or I mean we met him briefly, but it wasn't like you know Cleveland was. I mean the owner was Hassel was sitting up in the stands with him, which right. we all see, and that was kind of you know interesting. Um, but no, so it's funny. So I think a lot of there, sometimes there's misinformation. I think sometimes teams intentionally want to you know put out smoke screens, change stuff up. I think we're so. I mean, we really, and, and 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 I think there's more a testament to you guys, and you're part of the whole media, pro, you know, all the media, like. There's so much information. It's a different NFL now because in the days of old, it used to be a print media, and, and there would be really well-connected writers. I used to, you know, read Will McDonough a lot, and I always remember he was very connected with a lot of very, very high-level people. And you know, there would be snippets of information come out. But now with like the 24/7 news cycle and with all the information that's out there, it's like um, it's just a different. It's a different. It's, you know, it's a different environment. So when you go and deal with the media, you're very careful, very guarded, almost not to sort of you know, let out some but insider do you, information. Do but you they, ever tell somebody in the media something that's not true just to send a, uh, to get somebody off your scent? Honestly, no. I, I think the one thing, the one thing, one of uh, the guy I used to work for many years ago, um, who was the general manager, told me, he's like, you know, do not, you know, what you don't do is you don't lie to the media. Like, you, now you may, you can omit, you can, you, know, you never, I don't, I'm not, I don't, and, I mean, it's, it's a relationship, so I don't think it's, you don't think it's right to be dishonest. You can be, you can, you know, choose not to answer a question, or you can, you know, maybe, you know, not be evasive, but you, you, you just, you don't want to do anything that's going to go into maybe hurt your team's ability to be successful. That's that's what it kind of comes down to. But I, but I don't agree with, I don't, you know, I don't subscribe to or believe in to, to blatantly try to mislead or lie or be dishonest. I don't think that's a good way to, you know, to have relationships with a lot of people in the industry, basically. That, and, and we all, and again, between the media and the teams, and it is all the business of, you know, sports or business of football. So it's. Um, but you know, if somebody with the sixth, if somebody with the fifth pick calls you and said, Mike, listen, I, I just want to know who you taking with the third pick. Would you tell them? No. No, I've actually, had team, I've actually had teams, a lot of teams when they call and actually do trades, they're like, uh, well, who are you taking? I'll, if you tell me who you're taking, then I'll maybe I'll do the trade with you. But no, I wouldn't ever be like, hey, I'm, so no. So when you don't call a team and say, hey, we're trying to trade for a pick and these are the three guys we're going to take, you never do that. Now, you may, you may not, you know, they may call back and say, you agree to a trade. You call back, hey, if our guy's on the clock and they call back and you can be like, hey, our guy, you know, our guy just went or our guy just went two picks ago or whatever the case may be. Sometimes you may do that. But right. that, you don't really do that very often. It's usually, like, hey, no, we're out. Our guy's not there anymore. You know, so. Gotcha. All right, go, go watch on. Game of Thrones. All right. Enjoy <laughs> it. You, you won't be disappointed. <laughs> All right. Have a good day now, guys. All right. Take it easy.